True Review. Hello everybody, welcome to another True Review. I'm of course Chewy, a million G gamer, and this is Home Sweet Home on the Xbox One, currently available in US regions only for the launch price of $17.99 before reverting to a price of $19.99. Story. Tim's life has drastically changed since his wife disappeared mysteriously. In one night after suffering from the sorrow for a long time, he woke up in an unknown place instead of his house. While trying to escape from the place, he was hunted by a wretched female spirit. Can he survive if his place actually is his house? Does it relate to the disappearance of his wife? Some dark sinister secrets are hidden inside this house, and it won't be a place of happiness as it used to be any longer. It's completely different. Graphics Home Sweet Home doesn't really set the world alight with graphical fidelity with its environments and as per usual with these type of survival horror games you generally will find yourself wandering through the same bland sparse buildings littered with identical assets cropping up over and over again. On the other hand it's supernatural characters I was quite impressed with, the main one being the box cutter wielding schoolgirl who pursues you for the majority of the game, being generally eerie. The way she shambles around pale, bruised, blooded skin, blood splatter on her shirt is very unsettling indeed. The second act introduces you to a giant creature called a Preta, or at least that's how it looks like it's pronounced. Now whilst it's not as foreboding and well defined as the schoolgirl, it does still look pretty menacing as far as big brown pustule covered creatures can go. Act 3 does revert back to the schoolgirl in which she's supported by some red spirits who generally look okay. Sound. Jane? Jane wait! Please! Jane! Fuck! Shit! Now this is where the game itself is in creating a fantastic atmosphere. I mean, let's start with our favourite schoolgirl. If her appearance wasn't bad enough, the blood curdling screech she lets out when she spots you generally does make you run for cover. But the best of all is the static white noise and the breathless voice that you hear when she passes by when you're hidden in a locker. It really is a horrible sound. It really does get into your head and you do generally feel sorry for this uh, sorrowful creature. Now another great aspect of Home Sweet Home's sound direction is when there's no sound at all. Now that might sound stupid, but in the moments of silence it actually gives you time to contemplate what the hell's going to happen next. And you're just waiting for that next, next scream, bellow or door slam to actually happen. Now what does unfortunately let the audio down is the voice acting of the human characters in the game. While it's not the worst in the world, it is passable at best, but with the lines not really delivered with any weight or gravitas, they don't really have the impact they're supposed to. Gameplay. So Tim wakes up not knowing where the hell he is and things quickly take a turn for the worse as you're quickly introduced to the murderous box quitting schoolgirl. As there's no combat in Home Sweet Home, the only option is to stay out of sight and if spotted, either get far enough away, which is extremely tricky to do, or get to a locker, which is the better option and one of the most common hiding spots in the game. Now a little ways into the first act you will find an amulet which allows you to fend off the schoolgirl on one occasion before it needs to recharge but then you do have to make sure you either get enough distance between you or get to a hiding spot because she will immediately pick up the pursuit when she recovers. Now unlike other games of this type you won't be opening millions of drawers and cupboards in fact there's very little for you to interact with which generally makes the puzzle solving a bit too easy as you know all the items that you have are very obvious use nearby. Pleasingly, the hide and seek nature of the game is really enjoyable with the erratic patterns the spirit takes on. It does keep you on the edge and makes you keep a watchful eye of your environment, picking out and knowing where all your hiding spots are should you get spotted and need to retreat. Thankfully, the game plays fair in this regards with you never feeling you've been seen unfairly. In between acts, you do visit Tim and Jane's home, which offers a brief moment of respite before the second act, which switches locations from a school to what I think is like a lodge and it trades a schoolgirl for the giant creature known as the Preta, which I mentioned previously. 
Now the environments, whilst bland, do feel like they are a usable environment as well, which I do really like. They loop around on each other with areas being revisited through previously locked doors, which I like a lot. I always like a game that has a genuine sense of environment. It's not just a random set of interconnected rooms that you never actually revisit. It's always uh, great when you think yeah, that this could be a real workable building and you can kind of get an, an idea in your head of how the floor plan actually works. The plot is told through the game's collectibles, so if you don't bother with these, then you are going to have no clue what's going on. Even then, I would say that if you do read them all, you still struggle to really have a clue what's going on. That's because this, this unfortunately is only episode one of the story. And uh, that was one of the things I didn't like about it. It felt like a little bit of a cop-out when I got to the end and it said, you complete episode one. I thought, what? I thought, where's the conclusion? I want to know what, what the hell's going on. Why have we been evading this spirit why are we here in the first place but i guess we're all going to have to tune into episode two to find that out so they've had a number of issues unfortunately with the pathing of the schoolgirl spirit getting stuck on corners and furniture and on a few occasions she does camp your hiding spots which means you have to purposely get captured by her forcing a restart the final encounter of the game does also have a tendency to glitch out and not hand control back to the player making you miss the conclusion of the schoolgirl story on the six times I've played through the section, it's been about 50-50 if the glitch actually occurs or not and costs you an achievement and obviously seeing the ending. Regards achievements as well, two of the collectible ones currently do not unlock as well. Fortunately, the one for Jane's diary will say you have all the diaries and will not pop for you. And there seems to be, in the regards to the other collectibles, either one that's missing from the final act or one that doesn't register as collected because uh, nobody has those achievements as of, and everybody has one missing and cannot find it. Now, for me, I really, really enjoyed this game. In regards to the, the, the glitches there, I think the pathing things can be fixed with a patch and so can the ending of it fix of a patch as well it's nothing too too much problematic it shouldn't really happen of course but it can easily be fixed and i do understand from developers that there is a patch in the works which should be dropping during the week that this video goes live so i really enjoy my time with home sweet home i think it's one of the better better survival no combat horror games that you will come across and i'm going to give home sweet home a definite buy Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the review, why not hit that subscribe and notification bell so you know when I upload new content or follow me on my Twitch channel in the description below when I stream each and every day.